Well, at the end of season two of Justice League, Star-Crossed, we pretty much blew everything up. We wrecked the Watchtower, kicked Hawkgirl out of the League. They're in pretty bad uh, shape. I mean, they did say that they were going to band together and, and continue on, but they weren't really sure how they were going to go about that. Actually, when I was writing the uh, last part of Star-Crossed, I thought that was the end of the show. We definitely had uh, some issues we had to deal with in uh, the next season, if we were going to get in a next season. The network came back and said they wanted to do more shows. Near as I can figure, we thought, well, we've got this two-part thing with this cast uh, under control. We know how to make good ones. Let's blow it up and do something completely different. <laughs> Welcome to the Justice League. When we started Justice League Unlimited, we, we uh, came to the conclusion that it would have to be an entirely different kind of organization for the Justice League. So they've got a new satellite, much bigger. We've brought in all these additional heroes because they need more, more troops. And we have John Jones being essentially a, a watch sergeant, uh, a desk sergeant at a police station. So he's the one who coordinates all the different um, uh, missions of the Justice League. We felt that we kind of needed somebody to be up on the watchtower keeping an eye on things and assigning missions and, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, that fire in Indochina gets put out at the same time that somebody's there to, you know, take care of that, that, you know, train, train wreck in France. Hawk and Dove, Star and Stripe, Shining Knight, Fire and Ice, Dr. Light. Bruce came up with the idea. He says, we're going to have all these heroes and they're all going to be on a team and they're going to break up and go on missions. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, it sounds pretty cool. Why don't we open up the ranks of the, the Justice League to include basically every hero in the DC universe that they'll let us play with? So it just seemed a natural progression to, to include more superheroes. Since there are so many of us, we have a chance to do more than just put out fires, both literal and figurative. Once everybody signed off on the new format, we sat down and said, okay, now which heroes do we actually want to use? First of all, we literally went through the DC who's who, and we literally made like this huge laundry list of characters that we submitted to DC and said, can we use these characters in the show? DC bent over backwards. They uh, let us use characters that, you know, we really wanted to use and they didn't want us to, and they really rarely said no to us. I mean, they, they really let us go nuts on their guys, and it was pretty cool. We're all equal in at least one way. Each of us is willing to make the sacrifices a hero needs to make, even the ultimate one. One of the ideas that we toyed with was, redesigning all the characters. And as it turned out, you know, you don't tug on Superman's cape. We're staying very true to what these designs originally were. Whichever incarnation the hero was in, when you first read the comic, that's, t that's the archetype. We never heard back from you. Been kind of busy. Someone's got to keep the streets safe while you and your pals Ready. are out there zipping around the galaxy. During our first two seasons, a lot of the fan comments revolved around Green Arrow because Green Arrow was essentially an eighth member of the Justice League in the comics originally. So we were all happy to use him. And then characters like The Question. He's pretty much the classic Steve Ditko question back from the Charlton days. The, the minute we recorded that show, the first, the first episode with The Question, we literally walked out of that recording going, you know, I just want to make the show all about The Question. From this point on, it's like, forget about Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman. It's like, it should be, just be all about The Question. What was that about? What do you think? We're asking questions someone doesn't want answered. Oh, learn a new tune already. The bad side of having all these characters is you want to, there are always characters in, in, in the back of your childhood that you've always wanted to play with, and you don't get, you don't always get a chance to do those shows. It turns out that, that we all have our different favorite heroes, and uh, we pass that list around to the producers and the writers and the, uh, the freelance writers and said, okay, who do you want to use? And we got some very odd choices that came in. Wanna Beast, how you doing? My legs are fine as is the rest of me. Up here. Whoa, she's got the fire of the cheetah in her. So we just picked the ones we liked the best, the ones who we knew had more of a backstory. There are a lot of really cool characters that we wouldn't have had time to work into the uh, old format that we get to see animated you know, for the first time. I think half the joy of watching the show is, is being able to pause it and look who's way in the background of that shot and say, look at that, that's, you know, that's Booster Gold hanging out with Gypsy back there. Theoretically, John has some plan in mind when he teams up this one with that one and their powers will complement each other, although often he does it for psychological purposes so that one will teach another a lesson. Sometimes there's clashes, sometimes there's fun, you know, personality-wise, it's, it's just fun to watch that go down and that's that's where the drama is. Why don't you take the stick out, Corporal? Captain. You've got 
Captain Adam, who's very military and does things by the book, on one side, and you've got Supergirl, who's uh, impulsive, on the other side, and it, it allows you to explore a lot of the internal conflict externally. When we decide which, which members of the, of the 40 will go off on uh, an adventure, it's a little bit like cooking, if you don't know too much about cooking and you'd, you'd like to do it, what ingredients would go well together, and you, you kind of guess. It's time to try a new path. And what path is that? Peace. Mm, not really my thing. The casting process goes like this. Whenever we have a script come in, we'll sit down with Andrea Romano, who's our vocal and casting director, and we'll just start brainstorming ideas for the characters. Ultimately, we just try to cast who we think would be appropriate for the part. No universe, however large, however small, is denied to me. Leaving the Justice League was difficult for her. I provided her sanctuary, a place to meditate on her life and future. Then we're looking at the big nightmare of nanotechnology. A machine that could build clones of itself out of atoms of anything. They nail these characters. They understand them inside and out. They really, really do. Um, and Andrea's really great at directing, and Bruce really knows exactly what he wants. We're going to use every bit of power we have left in our rings. Take one last shot at the android. A blast like that could destroy half the planet. Half a planet's better than none. During the first two seasons, we, we stuck to dramas and, and a, a format that, that we didn't really want to violate too much. You know, big villains, big fights. And after two seasons of that, some of the writers just said, let's have a little fun now. So uh, some of the stories are quieter and some of the stories are simpler. And there's still some that are still quite epic. You know, we're still, we're still managing to squeeze a whole lot of action into, you know, a little 20 minute story. Um, but, um, but it's definitely a much more, um, more open framework to, uh, to you know, generate story ideas. The new format made it a lot easier to do more comedic episodes, which we kind of shied away from in the first two seasons of Justice League. This was a lot of fun to us because it kind of really opened up the doors to the story possibilities of you know, featuring different characters and we could do different kinds of stories. We had a lot of fun with that. He's just a baby. That's all he needed. Oh man, that ain't all he needs. You can tell a comedy story. You can tell, you know, kid stuff. Uh, it's a lighthearted story. I mean, it's it's got some some kind of heavy, you know, undertones, but you're able to to tell these fun stories. I like the idea of being able to do comedy. I mean, uh, this little piggy is it's just outrageous. We never planned on having three comedies in in the first season of Justice League. It just kind of happened that way. Light him up! In general, the people around here don't have to force themselves to be creative. They have to keep a lid on. And that lid was raised real high on JLU. I really liked the show. I, I thought it was funny. I thought it was exciting. All these characters, this new watchtower, everything's hitting you so, you know, so hard, so fast. It's just a pageant of heroes. And uh, that, to me, that was a lot of fun to see all of them. It really doesn't get any better than that. That's just, uh, that was a dream. It's no holds barred at this point. All the gloves are off. You've got every single character you've ever wanted to see animated, you're now able to see. Might get to, you know, feed my, you know, my, my inner geek fix and get to see some of these heroes that I've liked for, you know, basically all my life. I get to see them animated and in action.